What's up, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Sorry for the technical difficulties. I was having just, I forgot to remove the overlay, which is probably the fifth time in the show that I've done that. Um, I hope everybody is having a great January. We're about halfway, more than halfway through the month, and hopefully your 2022 is treating you well, hopefully. I do apologize. My dogs are barking in the background. They decided to do that as soon as I went live, so just that's to be expected. Um, anyways, we have a very special guest tonight, um, or well, we have a very special team actually tonight that's going to be joining us. I'm really excited about them. I met them about, I don't know, six months ago or something like that at the recent Pair Unity. Um, they are a paranormal investigative team, so I'm really excited to have them on the show. Um, so I would like to introduce you to tonight's guest. Um, we have Linda with us here tonight. Um, she is from LNL Paranormal. Let's welcome Linda. Welcome, welcome. Hello. Hello. So I did introduce you a little bit, let them know you're part of LNL Paranormal. And so we only have Linda tonight with us, unfortunately, everybody. Um, but that's all right. Um, her teammate couldn't make it tonight, so we'll probably have them on again in the future, I'm sure. Um, however, let's go ahead and have you introduce yourself so everybody knows who is LNL Paranormal. Well, LNL Paranormal started about 14 years ago or so, maybe 13. I was between 16 and 17 when I actually started. Um, it had a different name back then. But I recently changed it when I met my teammate, Laura. We went with LNL Paranormal Investigations. I cannot for the life of me remember what that name was. I looked through all of my stuff and could not, couldn't pinpoint where I wrote it down at at one point. Um, I am the lead investigator and owner of LNL Paranormal. And we've helped quite a few people but unfortunately some years ago we lost pretty much everything so in 2018 we need to restart from scratch again <laughs> um, okay and how many people are so, on your team right now right now we it's just me and laura as actual investigators um then we have my boyfriend which i like to call him as the muscle in the driver, he has us mainly meet everywhere where we go. Um, and then he helps set up. So he's a muscle man, driver, and okay. tech guy, basically. <laughs> okay. You won't see him. Okay, well, that's fine. If he didn't want to join us, that's fine. Um, so um, now you said you and Laura, did you and Laura start the group? Is that right? Because that's why it's L and L. It's Linda and Laura, right? Yes, I started How? this with um, when I was about sixteen or seventeen mm -hmm. with um, my cousin, which we really haven't done anything with him. He hasn't made it to any of the events. And then when I met Laura is when we actually started L and L in twenty eighteen. Okay. So what, like, how did you two meet? How did you two know you both were interested in the paranormal? Did you meet in the community or? No, we did not. Honestly, we ended up meeting at our work. I ended up okay. getting a job with her at the gas station that she worked at. Okay. And she overheard me talking about it one day. And then she came up to me and was like, hey, the paranormal too and i was like oh you are we should you know we were talking about it you know our experiences and stuff and she goes why don't we just team up together and i was like hey that's a good idea so since 2018 we've been a team that's awesome that's awesome so fun um it's kind of crazy when you uh when you meet somebody new and the whole paranormal iceberg like gets out like that 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 conversation initial conversation like oh my god you're into this too it's it's amazing feeling isn't it <laughs> it is honestly it is being told that yeah. um, friends and everything and then getting into the paranormal world and finding you know people that are, like the paranormal it's like oh this is pretty cool i'm not the only yeah. one so 
Yeah, it's um, when you first get into the field, you don't realize how big it is and how many people are actually interested in this. I feel I feel like a lot of us feel like we're alone. And then we get in the field and it's a whole nother ball game. Oh, yeah. I'm turning some yep. lights on. Uh, <laughs> I know I turned my um, light that I just got for uh, yeah for videos and stuff and like this stuff because my yeah. house is poor lighting. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, it does, so it does. <laughs> what, what would you say led you to get into the paranormal? Because you got into it pretty young. So, um, what would you say kind of got you into this? So I was actually funny story. I was living in Claypool when I was younger. I live in Claypool now. So I All was right. living in Claypool. I was, we lived in the trailer park and literally the trailer park is right next door to the cemetery. So if you like hop the fence you would be in the cemetery. Um, I had what I thought at the time was an imaginary friend. And her name was Marie. Okay. And so I thought it was an imaginary friend. And she kept trying to get me to go into the cemetery. And I was like, you know what? I don't know if I should. Because I was really young at the time. I was maybe between six and eight. I can't remember the exact age. So yeah. I went. And she showed me away to her actual grave site and I was like well this is really weird and <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't really understand like I didn't grasp the concept of what was going on when I was younger but as I started getting older I knew I had special things about me I didn't know anything about it um I could still see them I could communicate with them I can sense when there is a presence around me um, I get these really deep cold chills. And as the years progressed, when I got to 16, I was like, you know what? I am something, this is my calling. Paranormal is my calling because with all these abilities and proving time and time again to everybody that, you know, I knew, which did lead to them wandering away from me because they said I was a freak. Um, I wanted to pursue it even more because I said, well, if I've got these abilities, well, maybe there's people out, out in the world like me that can help me understand it. So that's that's how it all started, honestly, was when I was a little girl with what I thought was imaginary friend, didn't turn out to be imaginary friend, and then trying to find other people like me to see if they could help yeah. me figure out what was going on. And, like, I thought I was going crazy. I did. Yeah. Not gonna did, play. It was scary because it all came up at me once. Right. Did you ever get a sense of what the little girl's like background story was? Did you ever kind of get to, did you play like a story in your head of who she was, but thought it was, you know, you making up, but it really wasn't? Yes. Yes. Um, she ended up being killed by her parents. Oh, I wow. dreamt about it. And she just kept saying that she got hurt by her mommy and daddy. And I was like, okay, you know, thinking, I think that's all in my head. I'm like, well, now that I think about it, I was like, I got to think about that the other night. I was like, maybe I should have been put away. But then again, it's not, it wasn't something that I was imagining. It was actually something real. But right. yeah, she ended up getting hurt by her parents. That is so sad. Um, yeah. how, how old was she? Do you know? Or roughly about how old she was? Six. Um, wow. I honestly, I went, uh, my mom is buried out in Claypool Cemetery. So when we drive from my mom's grave, I, her, I can still see her grave. And I can't even tell you exactly what it says now. It's so deteriorated. She was killed. Yeah. Uh, Mary was killed. Like, I want to say it was late early 1900s wow so it was a while ago oh my gosh that's uh i i mean i could deal with it as a kid but like now that i'm an adult with children i would be like so heartbroken i'd be heartbroken every time i, I you know I, I do it when i read for people if i come across a child i just oh uh, i hate it right. i hate it so um, by the way, to the audience, I forgot to mention, this is a Q&A session. So if you have any questions for Linda or in regards to LNL Paranormal, please feel free to put them in the chat. 
and I will get those over to her and she'll answer them here live on the stream. So and I don't know why my dog keeps barking. He's he's usually quiet, but <laughs> he has been so noisy. Can you hear him? I'm sure that everybody can yeah. hear him. It's, it's okay. I'm surprised you don't hear my German Shepherd going on. She's locked up in her cage and she's she's always whining yeah. to get out. And she's a huge He's figured out how to unlatch her cage and be able to get out. So I'm supposed to yeah. be quiet. Yeah. She looks like mom. I know you're about me. <laughs> so um, since we were fortunate enough to have the rest of the team here, do you want to give us a little overview about who they are and maybe what brought them to the field? Um, as far as I know, uh, Laura, she's had being, I don't see. I don't honestly really know her backstory, unfortunately. I know she's got abilities. I know she can sense when someone's around us. Um, she has tried doing it on her own and has not succeeded. Um, not really much I can tell you about her because we met at, like, we met at our workplace. We did a couple of things for one of her friends. She did show that, you know, she can sense people around us and yeah. um i just don't really don't know i mean i missed her that she was here so she could really a little bit elaborate on what her stuff is because we've never actually talked about it honestly okay. um now you mentioned your boyfriend is kind of like the tech techie type guy so do, do you and do you and laura have a, a specific role when you investigate I, when we investigate, I usually try to take the lead. Um, she, with giving with actually with her abilities, she's still trying to figure them out. Um, because they've not actually flared up on her until she met me. So when we do okay. investigations, I usually try to take the lead on it because I've got more grip on my abilities than she does. I know how, I know what what feelings are what, and mm -hmm. with uh, the dreams or the visions or premonitions, whatever you want to call them. Um, yeah. And there's times when, we'll, you know, we'll branch off, you know, do our separate thing, you know, and I don't try bossing anybody around. You, you want to go over here? Just let me know where you're going. So I, if I hear something. I'm not going to be like, well, wait, you know, so and we usually try staying together because we don't like to separate because we're just a small little itty bitty team. Right. <laughs> Just a little, a little itty bitty team, and so I'd rather stay close to my team than go off and be by myself, and then something happen, and then not be able to tell where you know where I'm at. Right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it's it's usually safer that way to at least have one person with you, um, just in case anything happens. So um, I'm gonna Wait. ask a question. We got a question here. I'm gonna pull up on the screen from Corey. Uh, you probably remember mm -hmm. Corey, I would think. Um, and yep. he wants to know what's what's your favorite location. And while you answer this question, I am gonna go take care of my dogs. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay. Let them know your favorite location. All right, I will. So Corey, I'm not for sure exactly what you're talking about with your favorite location, but I do have like. I don't remember if you remember my binders or not, but like my, my all time favorite location, I haven't been to there yet, but I'm hoping to get there soon is Waverly Hills. Um, I know just about everything about that place. Uh, uh, first, I was telling him that I haven't been to this place yet, but it's my all time favorite location, which is Waverly Hills. Okay. So I know just about everything. I have a lot of favorite locations. Um, until up to last year, actually, Corey, to scratch that, my favorite location that I've been to is the Hannah House down in Indianapolis. I absolutely love that experience, and I have to thank my mom for that one, too. Um, so we haven't really been to a lot of places. We really haven't done actual investigations type things. Um, yep. Last year was the first time doing Stuff like that but my all-time favorite one would have to be waverly hills but okay. as of right now Hannah house is my favorite awesome did you actually get to 
And I know it's really hard to get, well, used now it's really hard to get to Hannah House. So were you actually able to investigate Hannah House or just visiting? I mean, all you have to do is visit the place and it's pretty intense. So um, what was the situation? I did not get to investigate. Um, we were wanting to investigate, but as we were trying to figure out everything, um, COVID hit and it was so it was really bad, you know, and our, you know, we all lost part of our jobs. Like I was fortunate to keep working, but my hours got cut. Um, yeah, I was yeah. able to go down to the Hannah house last year. It was just me and the boyfriend. We went down for the paranormal paranormal day of celebration. And I went in and that was an experience just itself going in. Yeah. And I got yeah, it's yeah, that's an event I've I've been to before um, that they have down there. I I actually was fortunate enough. I actually got to investigate the Hannah House. Um, thankfully, um, after they they, I don't even know if I'm allowed to even talk about it, but after they stopped investigations, um, I actually got the opportunity because the people that owned it was friends with a friend of mine. So um, it was really quiet that night which i was surprised because that place is so active like you can just feel the energy so oh, yeah it, it it doesn't like it can seem quiet but if you are sensitive or anything like that you know there's stuff going on there. it is very very full of energy oh it is so. um before you actually before we went we um we're supposed to go down for a concert and we had just drove past it and even like when we got near it, like I could tell we were getting near it because at, like every sense in my body, just like everything just went up. And I was like, we're getting yeah. close to something yeah. that's, you know, and then I seen it, I was like, that's it. And he, so, mm -hmm. so it was, it was, it's really active. Yeah. Corey says you guys have to get together and do 1812. What's 1812? Um, should should oh. I know this? Oh gosh. Eight, 18 Yes, you should know this. 1812 is not that far away from you, I don't think. I don't even know where Claypool is. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, but 1812 is over in I think Wabash County. Is that where Claypool's at? <laughs> and it was uh, in, no. What's that? Your you know, I would have to ask around. Oh, did it? So yeah. it, I would have to, I know quite a few people around here and um, I would have to ask somebody that, I won't mention him to keep it professional. Um, I'll have to ask him if he knows about that because he's really good. He's like really good with Wabash County to see if he knows where this place is. Okay. Because I've yeah. never heard of it's, it. I don't know it's bad now. It's an old battleground is but what it is. Well, Cora, if you want to, let's go. I'm open to anything. <laughs> oh, and hello, Howard. Hello to everybody, by the way, that's stopped in. I've just shared your hello. Hello, hello, hello. We welcome you. Howard <laughs> is a funny, funny guy. Um, oh, okay. So I guess 1812 is between Mary and Wabash. So I don't know. Wherever that lands it at, that's where it's at. <laughs> um, somebody yep, I, said that. I so, Eloise from Westland is good too. I don't know that one. I don't know that one, but Kent County is where he's talking. Uh, where Corey's talking about eighteen twelve. I was just informed. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, whoops! I didn't mean click that. Looks like you got a fan here. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Chanel. Um, good evening, Penny. Hey, you take care too, Rodney. My worker from Andy. Hello, Ireland. Welcome, welcome. I'm so glad to see all you beautiful people coming in here. This is wonderful. <laughs> so we did have another question here for Rodney, which I think Rodney's leaving because he put TC. That means take care. But too bad we're answering the question. Um, what kind of field do you specialize in the paranormal? So. Um, oh God. So um what, what, I mean, I don't know what kind of fields there are. There's like, there's mediums, there's 
so on and so forth. But what would you say you specialize in? I specialize, if you want mediums and stuff, um, I don't claim to be. I mean, I'm an empath medium, more empath than medium. Um, we specialize in trying to help with You go in, we do a pre-investigation as much as we can. Then we go in, do an investigation, go through all of our evidence, and depending on what I feel, because usually what I feel is usually right, which is I hate to say that, and it scares me sometimes. It's good to be and confident. And then we try helping get rid of um, it's, And then we help get rid of the people, or we try crossing them over. I mean, it's just a wide variety, okay. honestly. We've I have studied so much about the paranormal in the last and since I was 16. So I yeah. wanted to know, still learning, and so I guess we don't really have a field that we actually specialize in. We're li willing to learn any of the field. Yeah, um, a lot of teams have that now, where they have different people who bring different things to the table. Um, you, I mean, especially if you're one of those teams who. Uh, say you're going to and you know residentials you have to have a variety of resources you have to have a variety of people who can do multiple things like you know cleansings mediums people who are more techy because you don't know you can be you can meet a couple and one of them's going to be more skeptical unless it's scientifically proven one of them's going to be more in tuned with the spirit world so i mean you get a variety of people so you have to be able to offer those services if you're taking on residentials so um howard we know you investigate toilets he's something else if you don't ever watch howard's shows <laughs> and you want a good laugh go watch howard's shows um Hello, Donna. Yes. Welcome. All right. I really appreciate everybody coming on here tonight. This is awesome. Okay, Andy, you have a question for us. All right, let's pop this up here in seats. It's a loaded one. I, hi, could you answer something for me? I was told by spirit that I'm a powerful light warrior and human angel. Also, for some reason, I find myself upset, upset for the whole planet and the spirit world. This is a relatable question, but do you know, what would you, how would you answer it? Um, honestly, I don't know because that's just like a really confusing, I mean, if mm -hmm. you were told by something that you're, you know, a part, you know, a light warrior and a human angel, I honestly would uh, look more into and see, you know, like I did. Just go in and try doing research and seeing if there's anybody that looks like you and being able to help enlighten what, what you know, everything is, what the spirit meant. That's just a, that's a different type of question and I'm used to, so. Yeah, yeah. And I, I agree with you. I would definitely do more research on it. It's kind of, I would be suspicious of the spirit that was telling me that I would. Um, oh yeah. And, and I just, I find, you know, when he said, when he's at, saying here, he finds himself upset for the whole planet and the spirit world. I think that's a hundred percent relatable. I think a lot of people in tune with the spirit world is upset for the whole world. I mean, there is so much going on that is just not okay and we can feel it it's disrupting us it's disrupting right. our lives it's disrupting everything so it's i totally find that relatable how, how do you feel about that are you connected in a way to where like the world right now is is just you can feel it's shifting a difference. yeah i feel the difference um it's it is disrupting because there's so much things going on and it seems like Every time I turn around, I can't really get a good feel on certain things. And it's just like, I have to turn it off most of the time because I keep getting mixed signals. Yeah. 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 Pen, pinpointing, like the messages you're getting in or the feelings, pinpointing to who it's coming from can sometimes be one of the hardest things to do. Um, 
that's why when you get readings from oh, yeah. psychics and mediums, the, they'll ask questions like, I'm feeling this way, but I'm not sure who it's coming from, but they're sitting in front of two people. And so that's when they usually ask for confirmation. But yeah, so I mean, that's my little input on it. <laughs> so shady ass shit out there. Okay. Thanks, Howard. We know. We know. <laughs> Um, Corey has another question here, um, so let's go ahead and pull this up. What do you think about shadow people? People, I've had a lot of experience with those. Um, I honestly never really thought about it because I see them, and it's like, okay, I know you're there. So what is your, like, I asked him, what is your purpose of trying to be a shadow person? Most of the time, it's just a, I'm going to spook you type thing. I, not, there's, um, I've never actually run into a shadow person that was bad. Most of the time, okay. it's just somebody trying to spook me or they're trying to get my attention. So I just, it's a, a thought, I guess you could say. So I didn't catch that last time, sentence. Title people, they're just like trying to get my attention. Most of the time, like I said, most of the time they're trying to so they get my attention or trying to spook me because mm -hmm. my guards have been down here lately. So it's, uh, I see. I said, what do you want? If you don't want nothing important, then it can wait. <laughs> yeah, now now is not the time Especially to have your guards one. down. Yeah. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, that one out. I've been sick the last two weeks now, and I've had them down. Um, mm -hmm. Only because I feel better. Yeah, I learned that. I was like, yeah, let's not do this no more. So I put them all back up. And All right. Um, Joshua says he's been feeling a lot of alien energy. I don't know if you have an opinion on aliens, but I kind of see where he's coming from um, when it comes to dealing with the world. Do you, do you believe in aliens? I believe there's anything out there. Let's put it that way. So if there's aliens or whatever, you know, I've, always, I've seen skeptics along with that. I've seen, you know, think people that actually believe that they've been abducted by aliens. So it's like, Okay, there might there might be you know I'm not saying that there is I'm not saying that there's not. Who knows what's out there? Because I cannot give you every answer in the world. So do I hope to right. not get abducted? One day? If they are real, then yeah, that'd be nice. But okay. it, if it happens, it happens. Um. Okay, yeah, Andy just share a little bit more about his situation thank you for sharing that Andy. if you have any questions in regards to that let us know we do appreciate that um uh howard i'm not sharing your stuff that's that's a rude comment dude <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna pretend that didn't happen <laughs> okay so i'm gonna go move on to the next question <laughs> Um, who would you say influences you in the field? Like, do you have anybody that you idolize or look up to in the field? If you ask my oldest daughter, she'll tell me, she'll tell you Zach Bagans. Because <laughs> we watch a lot okay. of ghost adventures together. <laughs> um, okay. I honestly, I don't, he's never influenced me. We watch and it's just kind of like a mom daughter type bonding thing but if i would have to say anybody it would be the taps team ghost hunters tap okay i've been watch. i watched okay. them, um when i got a little bit older have more questions i came across their show and i watched their show so i got some of my answers like some of my questions answered so they really influenced me but if you ask like i said if you ask my oldest daughter maya she'll tell you zach bagan's ghost ventures that's all mom i'm watching i'm watching is it okay do you do you watch it because he knows what he's doing or do you watch it for his looks <laughs> i watch it because he knows what he's doing 
<laughs> now, I mean, there might have been a time when I washed it because I thought he was cute, you know, but hey, we all have our separate <laughs> impressions, right? Okay. I, I watch it because he knows what he's doing. Um, I actually got to talk to the guy, uh, uh, Bill Chapman. Bill, oh, what's his name? Can't think of that his name. That sounds right familiar. Now. Yeah. Oh. I was actually talking to the one that invented their SLS camera for them. Yeah. Oh, I can't remember his name. That's that's bad. And of course, it's not in my emails no more. <laughs> Bill Chapman, I what his name is. I can't remember. I was talking about getting an SLS camera, and I didn't realize it was him until I read his, like, the little signature on the email. Right. And I was like, wait a minute. Right. Uh, Corey is leaving us. Corey, thank you for for joining us. By the way, guys, uh, Corey and Shadow Seekers are going to be on the 13th dimension tonight. Just so stay tuned in after this show and you can talk with them and see 13th dimension because it's been a little bit. I think, well, maybe they were live last week. I don't remember. <laughs> um, I can't. And I'm just going to give a shout out to Howard. Howard, even though you're paying, hey, tonight they have the Unholy Trinity. If you like interesting shows, <laughs> interesting um, characters, actually, they're all great people. Uh, go check out their aliens tonight. So they're going to be talking aliens. That's at, I believe that's at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time after the 13th Dimension. So shout out to them also. Um, so, uh, what is something, I, I like to ask this question because everybody's different. What is something in the paranormal that you think people need to stop doing? That they need to stop doing? Yeah. <laughs> like a pet peeve of yours. A, a really big pet peeve of mine. And, and as a like a personal pet peeve and a paranormal investigator's pet peeve. Stop messing with the Ouija boards. That's like a big pet peeve of mine. And I'm sorry if anybody on here has played with them or uses them in communications. Um, it's just a really big pet peeve of mine because you don't know what's coming out of it until it's too late. So as a paranormal investigator and a personal view, Ouija boards, it just needs to stop. There, there is no point of them. There's plenty of more ways to communicate with an entity other than playing with a little piece of wood. <laughs> so do you not believe in Ouija boards or is it just the worry that you're going to conjure up something you shouldn't? I have had firsthand experiences with somebody that messed with an Ouija board that conjured up something that wasn't supposed to come, you know, shouldn't have been in this world. And I believe they work. I do. It's just a fear of, you know, if you're going to use it, you don't know what's going to come out of there. You don't know, you know, some things could hurt you like really bad. So it's like a why play with something if you don't know what you're doing and you don't know anybody to get rid of what comes out of that board. Okay. I've not had any negative experiences with Ouija boards. Actually, most of the time they don't even work for me. I don't know if it's why they just don't. <laughs> But uh, Joshua agrees with you, and I know there's several people out there who do agree with you. I know there's a big disagreement on Ouija boards. There's people who think they're just nothing, they're, they're no big deal. And there's people who think they are a big deal, and people should take it seriously if they're going to use it or, you know, don't use it. Um, so I absolutely totally get both sides of that, yeah. Right, and totally. I mean, I agree with you also right there. You know, if you're going to use one, then fine, you know. Just make sure you're educated on it. You know, don't mm -hmm. sit here and try playing with it because you don't know what's going to come out of it. You're going to do with one. At least try educating yourself. Me personally, I do not like them, like I said, and I will never touch one. And never one's never going to be allowed in my house. I mean, we all have our different views. And so I've yeah. heard people say that good things yeah. come out of them. But my personal experiences, parents paranormal investigator i've dealt with nothing but bad that came out of an ouija board so it's like yeah no 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 more i'm it gets a little irritating so what about to deal with the same go ahead yeah so what about 
other tools, other tools that are similar to a Ouija board, such as a pendul pendulum or, um, I mean, I guess dowsing rods are kind of old school, you know? Like, what about those? Do you think those are also like asking for something or no? Or they're completely different? They're completely different than a Ouija board. Like, I, um, there's been some experiences where, like, um, at the Hannah house, there was this teenage girl trying to use them, and I could see her moving her hands. And mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, they're not going to work if you're moving your hands. And then um, Jeff, I can't remember his last name. <laughs> this is going to be, this is really bad. Um, when we were out at right. uh, you know, he was showing the dowsy rods, and that changed my view right there. Watching him. So dowsing rods and pendulums, I don't have a problem with. If you're going to, I mean, you know, like. And so if you want to go old school, old school. If you want to go to school, go to new school. Just make sure you educate yourself on what you're doing before you do it. That's, you know, me as a paranormal investigator and a personal, you know, person you know, that helps people, you know, that's coming from me. I just, it's educate yourself. Okay. Um, and we do have another question here from Andy, but I don't even know if I know the, what he's, what I do apologize, Andy. I'm not sure what, what ITC is. Um, so, um, what do you think about water ITC spirit communications? I don't know what that is or, Spirit I don't know what that is. pictures and smoke ITC. Can you? Do you know what he's talking about? Um, okay. I don't know either. So if you can elaborate, yes, please, because I don't know what you're talking about. Is that something? Yeah, that <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know what I don't know what that is. So please elaborate, Andy, if you want to answer that question. I'm going to move on to the next one. Um, what? Oh, ITC. It's like a say on, I don't know, but I'm going to move on to the next one for now and let Andy clarify. But uh, if somebody was coming into the paranormal field, um, whether they be like a young kid or, you know, an adult, whatever, what kind of advice would you give them? If they were coming in and they wanted to do it, I would tell them to definitely go to Pair Unity or any like you can find a par paranormal show, Paranormal Day Celebration, Pair Unity. Or any of like the shows that you know we put on um it's really weird saying we because now my team is actually a part of that make sure you know go and see what type of equipment that you know the teams have talk to the teams about their experiences and see if it's something that they really want to do instead of just going into it straight into it um because with the paranormal, paranormal day celebration and peer unity I talked to a lot of people and I met some really awesome people and got to know a little bit more, you know, was more at home. So if you're going to feel at home at these events, then you're, you'll feel at home and better about trying to team up with different people to do investigations and just to know how to work the equipment also. Yeah. I, I agree with you. I think um, just going, because paranormal events, some of them, not all of them, but some of them are free. Just go talk to talk to actual investigators, talk to actual psychic mediums, you know, get to know what they do and, you know, if it's something you're going to really want to do or not. Don't waste thousands of dollars investigating on one place or investigating or, or buying equipment. And then you, you you just don't ever go investigate. You go one time. I meet so many one-time investigators. They go one time, and that's that. They just want to experience it. So, absolutely. And then also, if you're gonna do an investigation, I um, I haven't met somebody like that, you know, but I have heard of the people doing the one one-time investigation, and they were done. If you're gonna go on, if you're gonna start, and you do, you know, you do your research, like both of us said, make sure you do your research on the place that you're going to if you can don't go to somewhere that's had like really demonic activity or bad energy go somewhere that's like more peaceful so you don't get scared and be like nope i'm done yeah. but then again you can have that any location but like me i do extensive research um on any place 
and I have 140 locations and two binders. And I think you might have seen them at Perry Unity. They were sitting now. Um, and then I just got done with all the research. So make sure you do your research on your places yeah. before you go. So you know yeah. kind of what to expect, but not like fully to expect. Because we all have our different right. um, experiences. All right. Absolutely. We have a question here from Lizzie. Oh, I just lost it. How is, wow, why is this not working? How is the best way to go about investigating the spirit in their house? So if you had a spirit in your house, how would you go about investigating? That reminds me of something. It was funny, but not funny. So we'll, we'll answer this question with my story, if that's okay. I was um, sitting here okay. at my desk. And I was working at working on uh, some of the things that my my binders, as I call them, my binders. And Laura was on the phone. I had this candle, and it's pretty big. So I mean, it's about that size and about that round. And I was sitting on. Okay. Nothing really happens in my house. It's I try to make sure that it's cleansed very often. And the candle flew off of my printer. Nothing touched it. My dogs didn't hit it or nothing. It flew at me. So I was like, of course, it made me mad. I was like, you know what? I didn't sense anything. But then again, my blocks were up and I was talking to Laura. So I wasn't really paying attention. But then again, I'm in my own home. But anyway, so I told them, I said, okay, so if you're trying to get my attention, you got my attention. My laptop was up with um, WordPad. I was like, if you want to, you could use that. Or we can go to my phone and I can I can do a, um, just a recording or I can go and get my equipment out of my storage and we can do it that way. The best way I would say is try to let them know that you, you're there. Let them know that they're there and you can try recording on your phone anything that has a camera and a mic, literally pretty much nowadays can capture just about anything. And mm -hmm. I still to, the, to this day have not gotten any responses of why my candle was thrown at me. <laughs> maybe it was a passerby. Maybe, maybe. And the good thing, the cool, I mean, I didn't mention this earlier, but I've been able to soul travel, I guess you could say. I don't know what it's technically called. So I was... Okay. My, so it was... There was nothing in my house after that. So I don't know what I maybe it was a pastor. by like you said, I don't know. I haven't got any answers and I wish I did because now it's like irritating. Right. Like, why would you do that? You wanted my attention. You got my attention. So what now? Right. Right. Yeah. And, and sometimes we never get the answers we want. But like I said, people can just come through the house and they're out. So, um, Oh, uh, so Joshua, I think, is referring to, you said, uh, soul, what you call it, soul? Soul travel. What you call it? Okay, so he said astral astral travel. I call it astral projection. Um, I don't know if it, that's exactly the same thing or not, but where you're, um, like, out of body. Is that kind of what you were doing? Yeah, so where I'm not in my yeah. physical body, I'm actually in the spirit world. That's what I was talking about. If that's what. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the technical yeah. term for it. I just knew that I could do it. And it, it's really weird, though. though. So <laughs> I don't try to do it very often. And then you could do it without even realizing. I woke up with random bruises. Did you? When you did that, you did that? Okay. I'm just what sharing his Revelation file spirit communication. If anybody wants to go check it out. I've woken up with many bruises on my legs and stuff. I'm like, well, how did I get these? And the boyfriend's like, I don't know. I'm like, I had a paw print one time on my leg from doing it. And I didn't remember doing it, but I guess I did. A paw print? Did you have any pets in the room? I had a five-pound cat. Five-pound cat. And the paw print was about that big. Oh, She's really okay. Eating. That's She's that. really eating. Yeah. Um, so another question is, so you're out of Claypool, 
area. So that's like northeast Sudan, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Northeast, central Indiana, something like that, right? It's in Indiana. Central, um, so yeah. So it's like, um, central. 10 minutes south of Warsaw, about five, 10 minutes north, an hour from Fort Wayne. Okay. Um, do you offer any services such as residentials or anything like that if anybody's curious or in the area? Yes. Yep, we do. We haven't had any residentials in like my actual area, but Laura's we have. Um, we do offer residentials and everything. So, and we don't charge. Okay. Okay. Any uh, any events you're going to be at this year that they can come check you out at? Do you guys have any events planned? Yes, we do. Um, actually, in two weeks from today, we are going to the Monroe House down in Hartford. Okay. An event. And, um, that one was, we kept it a secret from everybody. I didn't even post it on LNL's page. So <laughs> um, I've been scrounging around trying to get everything ready. But yeah, we are going down to Hartford in two weeks from today. Okay. That's exciting. Any para unities or conventions coming up? We are going to do the para unity this year. We're also going to do the paranormal day celebration. Um, we are talking about going down to Waverly Hills this year. So hopefully, it's not not a definite yet. It's in the work. But okay, um, okay. We do have. We decided that we were going to be. I I paid for five spots. So there's already three of us, me, Laura, and then the driver and muscle, as we like to call him. So we have two yeah. spots open that we were going to let um, guests come in with us okay. for the Monroe house. And then if we do go down oh. to Waverly Hills, that's going to be for a table and there's only three spots taken up. So we'll have seven more spots that we could fill. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it's um those bigger locations, it's they they get costly, so <laughs> it's nice to get to take enough people with you. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, but these are all like with the Monroe house and if we do Waverly Hills, these were all gonna be for, you know, something for us to be able to say that we did. Um mm -hmm. I've never been to the Monroe house. Laura has. She said that she's been there. I was like, oh, okay. Well, I didn't know that. You know, okay, fine. And so we were talking about it. And so we decided to do it. So that's in two weeks. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm really yeah. excited. It's it's a very, this is my opinion, it's a very good location to go to. Um, it can scare you. It's not that it's not a nice easy it probably wouldn't i wouldn't recommend it as somebody's first investigation place it's cheap it's affordable it's affordable which i love because i i i want to i want to support these places that are doing this but i don't want to i don't want to sell my left arm to go you know so um, so i i appreciate that like i like like i said i try to do research on the places um most people are like, well, why do you do that? We just go in blind. Well, I don't want to put my team in something, you know, that's going to be dangerous, you know. If we go to these, like, I mean, I know Waverly Hills, you can see, I don't ask me the technical term because I can't pronounce it. Your double, we'll call it that, doppelanger or okay. something like that. You know, yep. there's a couple of locations on the list we have that, you know, are kind of got some heavy, dark energy. So I'm like, I want to know, I don't look... I read at what the experiences were, but they're all different. I don't look at what other paranormal teams have found. I look at what actual people, like civilians or guests on paranormal shows have felt and yeah. what is some of the backstory of the places. And that's another thing that we're working on about, well, excuse me, doing is the um, wanting to start making like some small videos of these places and just you know just a something fun or whatever so yeah i can't find yeah. history though in the house and it's really really irritating i was like why can't i find history about this place 
but so well known. Uh, the the so Monroe House, the Monroe House was on TV. It was um, oh crap, I don't know. Nick, Nick Frost, Frost. one of Nick. Yeah, um, my understanding there's, I don't want to bad mouth anybody, but there's some truth to that episode. So I haven't seen it. And so I you will. Um, okay. If it's not in writing, then I'm not gonna. I mean, I'm not gonna look at it. Like I have a book a collection of books uh, from places, uh, Waverly Hills, uh, the Winchester House, um, Lizzie Borden's house. And if you get a book on Lizzie Borden's house, let me tell you. Hold on, let me show you. It is literally 800 some pages. Wow. Before. That's the history from this. Wow. It's just like, I didn't realize it was yeah. that big when I ordered it. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Um, so we are actually at the last three minutes of the show. We always end the show a little bit early. So 13th dimension can go live because I love those people. <laughs> so I'm nice, but I did want to go ahead and is there anything anywhere on social media or how can people reach out to you or follow you? Where can they go to do that? LNL Paranormal Investigations, our Facebook. We do have a website, LNL Paranormal Investigations. It's still that weird code. Um, I can post it, and I want to. The website also has it, and we do have an email. Um, it's lnlparanormalinvestigations.yahoo.com, so you can reach us through there. So pretty much any of our platforms, you can reach us because I have linked most of like the email and the Facebook to that to everything. Okay. So everything's pretty much linked together, and then we'll okay. get back with you as soon as we can. <laughs> Okay, great. Yeah, and I have the links I was provided in the description, everybody. So if you, you know, you'd have to jot it down right now, but look at the description. You can find them there at those links. Um, as always, if you um, like what you're watching here, what, what you're seeing, please also look further down and come follow me here at Unveil Paranormal. I greatly appreciate the support everybody's given for the show. Everybody's given to my guests. It's it's been an amazing opportunity. The first the first season, last season, uh, we just started. This is second season, and we're ready to rock and roll and interview people and all that. So I greatly appreciate the support everybody has given to the show and to the guests here. Um, is there anything, any last thing you want to say, Linda, uh, to the audience uh, about the paranormal? Just be careful and do research. And if you get a chance, come out to Pure Unity Paranormal Day Celebration or any, in fact, paranormal events going on around you so you can meet fellow people and get to know it a little bit better before we go down because there's a lot of skeptics out there. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, thank you everybody who tuned in tonight. We greatly appreciate it. Go, go show LNL Paranormal some love. Go show Unveil Paranormal some love. Thank you, thank you everybody, and every, everybody have a good night.